Uh, let's just talk about what's going on when it comes to big multinationals being hit with large tax, bill tax bills. Why is this so? Why are they being caught so off guard? Well, we see indeed there's an increase of instructions coming our way uh, in relation to uh, huge tax assessments uh, issued by the DRC tax authorities. Uh, very often indeed it, it hits uh, companies by surprise um, and very often uh, companies have the impression that it's, it's very unfair the way they're hit by those tax assessments. Is, is it unfair? I mean, are, are rising taxes in the DRC um, unfair or is it just government uh, reorganizing their tax structure and perhaps making their tax structure more efficient? Well, it's, not, it's, never, it's never a black and white story and it's, it's, it's a bit new, more nuanced in practice than, than some people might, might think it is. Um, so indeed, there's, there's certain companies when they uh, when they structure their investments, they indeed don't do the proper research uh, when going in. They go in on a once-off opportunity, thinking that it will uh, be basically in and out, and it, they don't really need to to structure or to think about uh, the DRC legal framework. And then, of course, down the line, uh, they hit, they they run into problems, and especially when they extend their stay in the DRC. There's other companies that go in and that do indeed uh, their, their research, uh, but then that that come across the DRC tax authorities. Um, that do not always know the same structures those companies use in other jurisdictions, including in South Africa, uh, and then that raise suspicion when there's there's a structure uh, they well don't don't understand or are not used uh, used to seeing, uh, and then there's an ass assessment that comes out, and then basically uh, a client comes to us. So, so tell us, I mean, in terms of these these tax bills that mm. companies that you're dealing with have been hit with, are, are they that large? They they could actually jeopardize. Uh, their profitability to such an extent that they may have to shut operations in the DRC or look to exit the DRC? Well, for some companies it is indeed, it is because it, we're talking sometimes millions, uh, millions of dollars, of US dollars. So for, for some companies, even indeed, those amounts that are on those initial tax assessments would have, would, would have to be paid. That would, uh, that would definitely mean the end of their business in the DRC and sometimes even beyond. So where to from here? Uh, because of course you've got government that is increasing taxes. Uh, just looking at uh, just for everyone out there, corporate tax rates sitting at forty percent, and for miners it's thirty uh, percent. So yes. you've got government changing tax codes, changing the tax assessments, rising taxes. Uh, what is the uh, what is the solution for your clients? Well, I think there's two things. There's one, there will be indeed increases of taxes, and then probably coming uh, com coming uh, coming towards the end of the year or maybe beginning of next year with the reform of the of the mining code. Uh, but then there's a the current tax system and, and where indeed uh, companies run into problems. I think there's two things, uh, two things to be done and two, two pieces of advice. Uh, the first piece of advice is of course when you, when you go into the company, in, sorry, into the country, uh, you need to do your proper well, due diligence, you need to get your advisors on board and make sure that you, you structure uh, your investment uh, into, the com into the country in compliance with TRC law because there is a legal framework in place. It is not the Wild West as some people might think, so there is a legal, legal framework. So there is a legal framework, but isn't it shifting no. at the moment? That's, the, the, that's what the perception of changing tax assessments would be? Well, the challenges are that the existing framework that is, that is maybe not as, uh, from a quality perspective, not what, what some investors are used to. And then there's, there's indeed the, the changing framework. But again, it is a legal framework that you have to work with, and that, that, is, that is not different in the DRC as in other countries. Um, what you need to be careful about is that indeed you don't just copy, copy the, the structures you use in, in other, in other jurisdictions because they will not be compliant. And the tax authorities in the DRC are, well, we have seen, are, are quite aggressive. Uh, and as soon as there's some kind of suspicion, there will be assessments coming out, out and the assessments will be huge. So of course they, mm. they're looking at companies mm. making a lot of money and uh, wanting to get a, a piece of that pie as I was mm. saying earlier. Um, in terms of where the DRC sits right now, they, they're just recently looking to present their $8.2 billion mm. budget and that's up 20% mm. year on a year-on-year -year basis. And the IMF also saying that they need to alter mining codes, they need to relook uh, how companies are taxed perhaps in order to receive funding. Um, so, so they're also getting pressure on that front to be able to meet their targets. Do, do you think that this is not also the reason they're looking to tax companies? Th th there, is, there is probably, yeah, that, 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 is, that is certainly one of the reasons and, and even uh, because, because of the, the, budget, uh, the budget constraints, uh, there's also not only from a tax perspective but also the state-owned companies are receiving uh, increasing pressure from the minister responsible for those companies to get their act together and to uh, to get more revenue into the into the state, so uh, that is definitely uh, that is definitely an issue. Um, but also, well, to say when the tax assessment comes out, because of the push uh, of, of authorities, yes or no, 
there's things that can be done and, and investors often often tend to panic uh, and think that as soon as the assessment comes out the only thing you can you can do is either pay uh, or then some companies even think that that getting political support will, will be the way out and there are advices again uh, there is a legal framework in place and we engage we do engage with authorities uh, and are authorities willing to listen as you say you know they are aggressive those tax collectors mm. but are mm. authorities willing to to understand and listen to a business's case to lots of people surprise yes they are yeah. uh, it is possible to engage uh, with tax authorities and, and we had uh, even recently we had a tax claim that was completely annulled uh, after uh, a structure that our client uh, used and that was completely in compliance with the law even though the authorities uh, didn't, didn't uh, understand it initially uh, where the, the tax authorities accepted our explanation accepted the structure and uh, annulled the, the, the tax claim so it is indeed possible and, and I think it's indeed because the, the, the DRC doesn't have the best image and, and I think rightfully so it is a di very difficult uh, business climate uh, but because of that image, uh, investors sometimes think that that it's it's completely everything happens outside of a legal framework, and that is really the mistake not to make. It's, I would almost say that because of the, the business climate and because of the challenges, you need to comply more and be even more rigid in yeah. your investment than go if through that du due diligence process and have someone like you at their side and moving into a jurisdiction like this. Uh, talk to us about how DRC's uh, tax system and regulatory system measures up against other jurisdictions in Africa. Are you are you seeing Mm. a similar trend uh, playing out in other uh, other jurisdictions? Well, the, the big problem with, with lots of African jurisdictions is the legislation is sometimes very old uh, and sometimes very badly drafted, and especially in the tax sphere in the DRC, that is, that is a, a big concern. Uh, in addition to that, in the DRC well, has very old legislation, uh, and there's a very new, well, well, a very recent development on 27th of, of June of, 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 of last month. The DRC uh, will finalize the process to becoming a 17th member of, of OHADA, which is the Organization for Harmonization of Business Laws in Africa. So effectively, for example, the company's law uh, today, the basic act dates from 1887 which is even pre-colonial times when Congo was still a private property of, of Leopold II. And that Companies Act will be replaced with a Companies Act that dates from 1997, and that is, that is a common act uh, in 17 African jurisdictions, mainly uh, Francophone jurisdictions. So that is a giant leap forward, and that again will create more transparency uh, for investors, uh, and, and, and therefore will, will normally Make, make make business easier uh, in Congo. On the other hand, uh, a, a more negative development in the legal sphere is the farm law, the new farm law that then entered into force also last month that uh, provides for a 51% uh, or 50 plus 1% uh, local shareholding. Uh, which is uh, which is probably a, well, with it, which will be a big obstacle. Mm. Uh, is to that get what Zimbabwe has? No, no. Uh, well, it's, it's Zimbabwe. well, it's similar, and it, well, it's going that way. Mm. Uh, whilst uh, the the authorities had indicated that agriculture should be one of the next big sectors of expansion. Uh, with this law, effectively, you might rather drive drive investors away than getting new investors in. And then again, well, for the mining sector, it's there's the, the mining code is, is currently under review, and with this new farm law, there are fears that this might be an indication, even though no one has seen a, a draft yet, I think, of this mining code. But with the farm law, there's fears now that this might be the way that the DRC is going.